Hello, my name is Maru Patel and what we are going to talk about today is a holistic approach to life. First of all, let me just introduce myself. What was I like before my lifestyle and why I went through this and what benefits I've got from it. And I'm going to give you some tips and tricks what helped me in that transition period and how I got that transformation myself. Okay, so not until two years ago and going back throughout my life in my career, um, for about 20 years I would say I had a lifestyle which was, you know, very close to being crazy. So I used to sleep with three, four hours a day and I was fine. I used to drink, party like crazy, smoke cigars, eat totally irregularly. It could be 12 o'clock at night, it could be 6 in the morning, it could be halfway through the day. I could skip lunches, skip dinners, skip breakfast, no regular pattern. And this was for over 20 years. But I still felt healthy. I was full of energy. I could live on that short sleep. And in fact, um, everyone was wondering why and how I had so much energy. Okay, I'll be going to that a little bit later. However, the important thing is, until two years ago, 99% of my diet was non-veg for an Indian that is rare. So I needed to have meat, fish, whatever it is, on a daily basis at least 99% of my time. I was very, very rarely eating vegetables and salads and things along those lines, but still healthy. So two years ago, I had a whole bunch of my friends from East Africa, school buddies really, and they came in and we kind of like had a reunion after 30 years. And and, uh, you know, they saw the lifestyle, the clubbing, the cigar lifestyle, the champagnes, the vodkas, the whiskeys, uh, pizzas, pastas, crazy lifestyle. And, you know, on the final day, one of my friends who has a, a retreat resort said to me, you know, your internals are all screwed up. You really need to get yourself sorted out. I said, come on, I look healthy. What's wrong with me? He says, no, no, you need to get some, some meditation. You need to look at your diet. You need to look at your balanced lifestyle, etc. I said, I have have two sisters who are yoga gurus, dietitian, and uh, why would I want to do that? They've been talking to me about doing this thing for long and being Indians, we do that naturally anyway, but you know, uh, it was not my thing. He says, no, no, just come, at least we'll have some fun over there, come. So he convinced me on the back of a reunion fun thing, but had he told me what it was all about, I would probably not have turned up. I am so lucky I made that trip because that was one of a major uh, turning point for me. It's what I call a transformation point for me and you know in life everyone has two or three of these that was one of them for me you know you have one during your career you have one later part in your life that was one for me so I liked it so much that I'm opening up a holistic center myself in Bucharest so what happened I went there and the doctors the physicians the dietitians were all shocked after taking all my test results and they said wow you're so healthy we did all sorts of results from blood urine stools every test you can think of and um, after three days they said the reason why you are healthy is because you live on positive stress I'll say it again positive stress a lot of people think about the past they think about the worries they think about the stresses they had and they kind of like stay in that racket or the mess what I call on if I did this I could have done that and living in the past I made this mistake and he said this about me or she said this about me and they get worried about it they worry 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 and trust them stress themselves on the past rather than just moving on getting on with it and worry about how to plan their life and addressing those issues so they don't close those loops and I talk a lot about this in my book I talk a lot about this in the blog how to handle stresses how to handle uh, messes in your life okay However, in that uh, eight-day period, we did nothing but how to train your mind to switch off and to train your mind to switch off and then repair the cells in your body. And the way we did that was early morning wake up, hot water lemons, meditation and yoga session. Then you have an eight-day fruit and juice diet or a fast, as I call it. And the reason for that was um, because you try to switch your your mind away and your body away from worrying about digestion, breaking the proteins, the vitamins, the carbs, all these things, and just switching off from the phone, switching off from the laptop. So the mind is not thinking, chew, do this, answer the phone, answer the laptop, do the emails, put the carbs there, put the vitamins there, oh, it must be time to eat again.
again and you're doing all of that so it's switch away from all of that and switch away from your digestion system and take in the fluids only plus multivitamins so we used to have four of these juices what I call of multiple fruits and vegetables four times a day plus a soup at the end of the day and then the meditation session multivitamins to top it all up I've got this thing fully documented that's also available free of charge on the blog and on the Facebook Shakti motivation Shakti health and wellness sites as well so you're free to download any of that but what it taught for me was after three days I was so peaceful and calm we had two uh, yoga sessions two massages two enemas which is colon cleansing treatment how to balance your whole body again this is documented and you can uh, get that and uh, these treatments are available from our Shakti sites as well the most important thing I felt at the end of it was I was a new person I went through transition and I learned what the balance of uh, a life should look and feel like and uh, this is also uh, documented so you can have a look at it but what I looked at was myself in terms of career finances my physical environment my personal spiritual growth where I sit with my friends families my loved ones or not and, and also my personal health my personal social life my finances and things along these lines and we marked each and every one of those where you sit and where you would like to be to have a perfectly balanced lifestyle and I also looked at two or three things which is very close to my heart which is you know social community awareness which I've been doing for many years which is the charity side of it and helping the poor or people who cannot afford to either cure themselves or children from uh, you know broken families orphanages etc so I've been doing this for many years but that was a major contributor for me for achieving that balanced lifestyle and peace and calm and the more I give the better I feel the better I feel the better I operate in my work so that was one of my secrets I learned over there but once you've done this uh, balance of lifestyle what you do then is to see assess your own life and then you say you know why do I succeed why do I fail then you look at what goals am I going to set in the future and how I'm going to achieve to get this balanced lifestyle? So pick each one of these and set a goal for each one and say, this is my smart goals or smarter goals, and I'll talk about this in a minute, to get to that point. Then take action. Where most people fail is they don't take action and they don't follow it. And then again, reevaluate and carry on going through that under multiple iterations. Okay. Here's one of my main reasons why I think people should uh, address this and why change is important it's because if you are not complete and balanced no matter what you are chasing it could be your own success goals it could be your own health goals or whatever but you don't have that balance and you don't change and you're not transforming then you will feel miserable you feel miserable your brain and body and mind acts differently that means your cells won't get repaired you are prone to diseases you are prone to illnesses and things along these lines one of the main reasons why I think people fail is coming back to these smart goals is because when they set a goal and smart means specific measurable achievable realistic with this time scale but I've been using my own way of doing the E and the R so, so smarter goals the E is for excitement energy enthusiasm so make that goal fit into that high enthusiasm a lot of energy a lot of uh, Oomph, what I call it and the R is to make it realistically um, risk taking and also rewarding so you know the risk reward thing is very important and put a compelling reasons why so if your goal is I want to lose 10 kilograms by the end of summer then put the E and the R this is why I'm so uh, passionate about it and this is why I'm so energetic about it this is why I'm so enthusiastic about it and the R for the reward if I succeed in achieving that goal this is how life would look like you know so draw yourself a picture I could be in my best bikini or swimsuit I could feel so good I could live healthy I'll feel better and this is the upside to it and the down side is I'll be lazy lethargic I want to achieve my uh, dreams and I will look horrible I will have a miserable lifestyle my social life will get affected my work life will get affected etc that means financial trouble social trouble and all these other troubles that come with it 
So that's what the R and the E's are for. However, reward yourself. I always believe in retail therapy. You know, women do this the best. They love retail therapy. You know, men should learn some of this. So whenever you achieve your goal, you should always reward yourself. You know, so if your goal is in business terms, I want to double my business by the end of next year, set a time. By June 2013, I want to double my business. So if that's the goal, then say, this is the E's and the R's for that. You know, and the reward is, I will buy myself a watch, car, house, whatever it may be that uh, your business can afford to, for you to have. Or if I fail, this is what life would look like. Yeah. So put both and put those compelling reasons stuck around uh, various places. And if a diet is your issue or if uh, uh, teamwork is your issue, you know, I find a trick that works for me is putting those yellow post-its in places that you sit, see on a regular basis, be it your office, be it your fridge, be it your not mirror by the bathroom or wherever, just to remind you before and the after or the risk and the reward side of it. So this motivates you. This is why people fail because, you know, everyone has New Year's resolutions but you know 90% of the people generally don't make their New Year's resolution because the commitment level is low, the, the, the compelling reasons are low, the, the support is not right and things along these lines don't work okay and you know you have to motivate yourself to, to make sure that you avoid such failures and one of the tricks I have that I always say is you know surround yourself with positive attitude, positive mindset people around you people that you can feed off, people that you can bounce ideas with, people who will drive you, push you for your interest and your goals. Share your goals with people. You know, share your goals with your coaches, mentors. Everyone should have a coach and a mentor. I have one too. So once you share it with this, the mind thinks that, hang on, I've made a kind of like a mental bet or a mental uh, uh, promise with a friend or a coach or a mentor and you want to try and achieve it so that you don't let somebody down so share those goals with people you know in achieving even that wheel of life and the smarter goals for each one of those okay once you've achieved that balance you will see that the amount of happiness you get to me success is having a well-balanced wheel of life and that's how I see success